Hello everyone, welcome back to the second channel. I have some terrific news. The Titanic is getting a sequel. Now you're probably wondering, how could the Titanic possibly get a sequel? It's a historical movie. Like, nothing happened after it that would require another movie. And to that I would say, I'm not talking about the movie. I'm talking about the boat. The boat is getting a sequel. Crack open a sparkling water and let's jump into it. They're making a second Titanic that you'll be able to sail on if you want to. You heard that right. We got the Titanic 2 before GTA 6. I actually like that that's like a common joke that people say because it reminds me of like ancient times. Before they had like the current year numbering system, they would describe events happening as being in the time of a particular king ruling, in the time of some historical event. So it actually kind of makes me feel like in the time before GTA 6, we are getting the Titanic 2. This is gonna help historians a lot in the future. Now this replica Titanic is supposed to be far superior to the original Titanic and will carry passengers around the world in quote, style and luxury. This sounds exactly like the first Titanic so far. Well, not exactly like the first Titanic because the first Titanic was supposed to carry passengers around the world, but I think it only got like halfway, if I recall correctly, because something happened. I don't exactly remember. Now, the Titanic 2 is supposed to start construction next year as the Australian billionaire heading this project who is named Clive. I, I like that this guy in the Australian billionaire on a first name basis. Who is this guy? Clyde? Oh, his name is Clive, the fifth richest Australian. He has iron ore and coal holdings. What is this dude, a Minecraft villager? And he would actually trade you some bread for an emerald. The third time that the Titanic 2 was supposed to be built, but you know what they say, third time's a charm. Wait, 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 wait. So he tried to build it multiple times already and failed? Dude, I don't know if there's like a better sign that the universe is telling you don't do this than the construction project itself failing three times. If it's actually completed this time, then it will be done sometime around June, 2027. It'll be done in June 2027 and will inevitably crash in July of 2027. Since the announcement, many people online are very, very skeptical of the ship. It seems like when it comes to anything to do with the Titanic, people believe that history will end up repeating itself. I mean, look, I don't necessarily think that there's anything inherently, like cursed about the Titanic. I don't think it's like destined to crash into an iceberg. It's just kind of a weird thing to do. And also if you're making a one-to-one -one replica, I guess you could argue that, you know, the first Titanic obviously did have some kind of structural flaw to it because when it ran into an iceberg, it broke. I don't know if my, I actually, I don't know if that's a structural flaw or if that would happen with any ship. Would that happen with a modern cruise ship? What would happen if a, <laughs> Wow, this is some interesting search results. What would happen if the sun exploded, if the moon disappeared, if Yellowstone erupted? There's a lot of existential threats in the Google search results. Okay, don't get distracted. What would happen if a modern, whoa! Cruise ship hit an iceberg. That's the only recommended search result. Wow. All I typed is what would happen if a modern. Unlike Titanic, modern liners are welded together, not riveted, but the hull would still buckle impacting an iceberg that hard and presuming she hits and the bow takes a large impact, she will sink. Take this with a grain of salt because this is from a Quora answer. Someone did make a point that legally they have to now have enough lifeboats on board for everyone. So hopefully it wouldn't be as big of a deal if they crashed into an iceberg. If I was a billionaire, as soon as I heard about this guy's plan, I would also announce that I am planning on building a sequel to the iceberg, and I'm gonna put it directly in the path of this new Titanic. It's gonna be like a billionaire game of chicken. Okay, here's an article about the whole thing. What is the Titanic 2? Billionaire Clive Palmer revives plan for replica ship. It essentially recreate the exact ship that sank in 1912, including a third class cafeteria that will serve stew and mash at long tables for those interested in the most authentic experience. This kind of reminds me of that Star Wars hotel. The one where you just like get locked in it for two days and you don't have windows and you just have to pretend you're in Star Wars. That actually ended up closing because it was really expensive. It just feels like a very immersive experience. And I bet like the third class tickets are also going to be really expensive too, where you get served stew and mash. Doesn't sound that luxurious. Crucial quote. So I could do the Titanic. I'm gonna do it. Sounds like whenever they got this quote from, he thought of the idea right then and there. He's like, mm, I could do the Titanic. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. 
I'm gonna do it. It's a lot more fun to do the Titanic than it is to sit at home and count my money. Yeah, well, that's probably what the people who made the first Titanic thought, and look where they are now. They're dead. They actually weren't on the boat, but they are dead now because, you know, that was like a hundred years ago. The ship is physically smaller than the majority of today's transatlantic cruisers, but largely on par when it comes to capacity. Yeah, actually, that's interesting. I feel like I've seen pictures of modern cruise ships next to the Titanic, and it's actually insane how much bigger modern cruise ships are. Let's see if Google can guess what I'm going to type this time. Modern cruise ship versus Titanic. Damn, dude. Yeah, look at this. Look at that, man. And that's not even the biggest cruise ship, that one in the background. Look at how big this cruise ship is. Sorry, why would I pay to be third class eating mashed potatoes and stew on a Titanic sequel when I could go on this literal city on the water? Granted, I don't really like cruises, so I'm not gonna go on either. I mean, it doesn't seem like the experience even compares. Look at this. Look at them go. If you were on this thing and it hit an iceberg, I don't think you would even notice. You'd be having too much freaking fun. Okay, so the Titanic 2 is gonna be 882 feet long. Icon of the Seas is 1,197 feet long. You know, that's actually like closer than I thought it would be. That's like, what, like a 300 foot difference? Oh, but it's twice as wide. 100 feet versus 213 feet. Damn, Icon of the Seas. She did. Okay, here's a video of Captain Clive talking about his idea. He's not gonna be the captain of the ship, is he? He's like a mining tycoon. I don't think he knows anything about driving a ship, but I guess that might make the experience a little more authentic. Eccentric billionaire Clive Palmer has relaunched his plans to build the Titanic 2 for the third, rather the third time in just over a decade. At this point, it's not even the Titanic 2 anymore. He's tried to build this thing so many times. It's like the Titanic 5. Yes, Clive is dreaming again of building a tinny. What kind of conspiracy theorist ass newsroom is this? What's going on back here? In other news, I'm also very close to solving the mystery of the royal murders. Oh, it's Kate Middleton back there. That's her name, right? The princess or whatever that was like missing. Dude, he's like full on conspiracy theorist mode back there. When you reach my age, you either want to build a boat or go on a holiday. So I thought I'd build a boat. When we reach your age, you either build a boat or go on holiday. That's weird. I feel like I have a lot of relatives that are his age and... <laughs> None of them have ever built a boat, but I guess they have been on holiday. You know, you can make that kind of statement about anything as long as one of the things is something that most people do. Most people, when they turn 16, either get their driver's license or fly up to the moon and blow up in a big explosion of glitter and confetti. You'll be going back in time to, to 1912 when men and women looked at each other differently. Yeah, back when men and women looked at each other like, oh no, the ship's going down. The Titanic is coming with Clive assembling the media last week to declare. Oh, he's holding a little like media press conference for his event. Do you think he's done this every time he started trying to make the Titanic happen? Guys, I don't think he really wants to build the Titanic. I think he just wants the attention. He just likes getting a lot of people into a room and announcing something exciting. And is that so wrong? When you get to his age, you usually do this type of thing. The first ship will come into service scheduled at the moment in June. 2027. The first? You mean there's more? And only three years away? Hmm. So, what's the cost? This news reporter is having none of it. He does not buy any of Clive's dreams. Oh, really? 2027? And you're actually gonna build it? And you're gonna build multiple? You dumb sack of shit. How stupid do you think we are? <laughs> Can you just end this press conference so I can get back to solving these murders? But I'm sure the shipyards will want to charge me a billion dollars for it. They can see a sucker a mile away. So, will anyone hop on board? It sank. Why would I buy a ticket on another one? I'll go for it, Clive. I hope you go down to the bottom of the sea in it. Ouch. That was such a pleasant way to say I hope you die. Well, Clive, I hope you sink down to the bottom of the sea and have a little party with the fishes. Has the Fin Review got it right? Are you worth 23 billion? I think within a you know, 10 to 15 percent range, they might be right. Imagine having so much money that you, you actually <laughs> don't seem to know how much you have. He was like, yeah, I think so. I should check. Actually, I haven't checked my bank account in years. I don't even know if I have money anymore. <laughs> he logs into his bank account. He's actually the poorest person in Australia. Thought I was a billionaire. What happened? Spent all my money trading with that villager. Ah. Okay, here's another related video about mining billionaire Clive Palmer suing the Australian government for $300 billion. In 2012, the WA government rejected a proposal by Palmer's mining company for a mine in the Pilbara. Palmer sued the WA government, but failed 
for a number of different reasons. Palmer is now attempting to sue the federal government instead. Why? Palmer's mining company is Australian. Why? Well, he likes money and he wants more of it, so he figures this would be a good way to do that. He also wants to build a boat that costs $300 billion. Now, the Australian government has signed a trade agreement with Singapore that offers some protections to Singaporean investors. Palmer is effectively arguing that he is a Singaporean investor entitled to these protections. So now he's suing for $300 billion. I don't know, man. I hope he loses that case because, like, if the ship is going to cost $1 billion and he's about to win $300 billion, what other kooky ideas is he going to come up with? He's going to do Titanic 2. He's going to do the Hindenburg 2. He's going to do Smallpox 2. Going to take us back to when Smallpox were a thing. When men and women looked at each other different. They looked at each other like, oh my god, we've got Smallpox. <laughs> that was not a good Australian accent. I'm not proud of that. Billionaire says his long-delayed Titanic 2 ship will be antidote to woke politics. How so? <laughs> That's not why the first one sank, is it? It'll be a COVID vaccine-free environment. Vaccine-free how? He said we won't have any. I can't do an Australian accent. I'm sorry. I gotta stop trying. We don't believe people should be compelled. You might be aware of it, but I recently funded a case in Queensland where we had the vaccines declared unlawful because we believe that impeded on individual choice and freedom. So your way of committing to individual choice is by making the Titanic 2 a vaccine free zone. You're not actually not allowed to get it if you come onto the Titanic 2. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Oh, okay, he says that vaccine vaccinated people will be allowed on the ship. That's very kind of him. This gets to something you said in your recent press conference, which is that the Titanic reflects traditional values instead of woke values. So can you explain what that means? He said, there's been a concept in society that you can cancel people. I think that you know what I mean by canceled people. And we think it's a terrible concept. The United States was founded on the rights of men to be different. Yeah, but you're Australian? <laughs> Okay, that literally didn't answer the question at all. He just doesn't like that people can get canceled now. Well, you know who all got canceled? Everyone that went on the Titanic. Okay, so this is the website for Blue Star Lines Titanic 2. We are very pleased to announce that after unforeseen global delays, we have re-engaged with partners to bring the dream of Titanic 2 to life. Wow, partners? You know, back in the day, we used to just say husbands or wives, but <laughs> I see the woke mind virus has taken you over, Clive. Third class experience. Wow, yeah, that really is like <laughs> what you'd expect from a 1910 cruise ship third class experience. You're bunking with other people. It's like a basically a studio suite. The sink is right here. There's probably a toilet just out of frame. It seems like Clive might be the type of person to be like, men don't have any power in society anymore. Things are too woke. Everything's against the man now. So he's making this cruise ship to go back to the time of the 1910s. But the joke's on him, because when this thing sinks, all of the women and children are actually gonna get to take the lifeboats. And the captain especially always goes down with the ship. Sorry, Captain Clive. Okay, so in a, apparently in 2012, Clive Palmer was trying to build a real life Jurassic Park in Australia. Clive, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to cause a catastrophe? <laughs> the hell, I don't think you have good intentions at all anymore. You're tr you are a super villain, I think. News like this is sure to spur some fire in dinosaur lovers, which is quickly assuaged by extreme tech's Ryan Whitwin, who warns folks that birthing a dinosaur is a bleak possibility as we don't have the living cells to do so. It's funny what the insanely rich can think of when there are more important things to create in the world. How about homes for the homeless to start with? It's actually not really even funny what they can think of, because he didn't even think of this. It's just from a movie. I don't know if you guys saw it, but there's a movie about this actually. And there's also a movie about the other thing too, the boat. This guy's just stealing ideas from 90s movies. Next he's like, I want to build toys that come to life and can talk to each other, but whenever humans come in the room, they fall down. It's a pretty good idea I just came up with. I'll call it Toy Story. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the lore of the Titanic 2. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, bye bye